Yes. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for joining us today. Boom, we are live. This is Tia with the Arcane Bear. Um, I'm very excited to be here with you again for another episode. Um, thank you all for joining us on this lovely Friday. I'm sure you're having a good time. There is so much to learn during these bull market cycles. Um, yesterday, we were going over what we uh, would actually turned out to look like a spring so far. Now, we're going to dive in. We're going to, before we go over, at the end of this episode, we're going to go over to community questions and answers. So be sure to stick around for that. But to begin with, we're just going to plow through our initial uh, kind of data analysis or money analysis, I guess, at this point, and then save all the questions and the live streaming stuff for later. That way we can segment the content. So for those of you watching later, uh, you won't have to sift through all the questions and comment answers that will eventually come right <laughs> shortly afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into Bitcoin's price here um, effectively. Let's take a look and you should be able to see my chart now. And right now I've got Bitcoin open on the four hour. Now what's kind of fun here, is, this is the same drawing we had done up yesterday. You can see this question mark uh, near the bottom of the screen. Um, circled. The reason for that was because we were looking for a spring at that moment and we had not yet seen it. So a spring is usually highlighted by uh, an immense amount of volume coming in and you can see them on the previous trading ranges here as well uh, and this volume coming in as well. Now there are two clear indicators uh, that we're going over in the private group. Uh, so for those of you that are in the private group you'll already know this but we could be looking at a larger trading range forming. This is kind of always one of the questions these are fractal in nature. So often you can chart smaller <laughs> trading ranges within a larger trading range. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, but let's right now, let's just focus on the trading range that we had highlighted yesterday, which was a rising gradient bottom um, that broke to the top and then very quickly came back down. Now, again, we were looking for the spring, um, which we see uh, highlighted again here by this volume supply that came in not too long after uh, this morning. So here's the spring, <laughs> no more question mark. We now know that's approximately where it is. So what comes next? You know, we're still above this horizontal trading range here. Um, and if, well, if we zoom out and we actually kind of remove some of this data, you can see that the proof, uh, the point of control line is actually sitting around 34,000. So yesterday in our video, our guess was we would come back to around 35 to 34,000. We had a sp uh, just a quick little wick that brought us in there. Um, and we actually started to turn around. We did see, if I go back to my regular candle chart, um, you can see this kind of, uh, uh, again, this degradative, uh, this breakdown basically. Um, into this, into the POC line. So we were looking for a return into the POC line. We had, w when we see this kind of volatility in the markets, A, it's not that good for trading, uh, unless you want a short-term scalp, but it's just not that reliable and you're playing with fire, basically. So what we want to do is be patient for the, basically, maturation of these trading ranges because this much volatility in the ecosystem isn't fun uh, for those of you who are more talented traders. Now, for those of you who are new to Bitcoin, and I was walking down at the cafe this morning, I was like, oh my God, Bitcoin's like, this guy's like, random friend of mine, he's like, I was at 10 grand and 20 grand, he's like, what should I do? Should I buy now? And figure it out later. And I'm, I keep, I think the best way to look at investing, guys, is almost like going to the gym. You don't go to the gym once and hope that you're gonna get ripped with these massive gains on day one. What you wanna do is keep showing up to the gym every month, hopefully every week, over the course of five or 10 years, and then you get jacked. That's how you do it, and that's how you get to keep those gains. Investing is no different. So what we're looking for right now is A, the number one, education and learning. That's pr like primarily what most people should be doing and then just find stable entries that you can afford to based off the revenue that you're making every month, whether it's your regular job, et cetera. So I don't short in a bull market. It's absolute insanity. Even if we do come down to $20,000, which would be amazing, like, wow, I would love that because we would just be buying more. I don't think that's the case because too many people like me <laughs> would buy the shit out of that spring. <laughs> so even if we do come lower, it'll be very, very short-lived. So don't get scared. If that happens, the market is trying to shake out the retail investors. They're like, be gone, retail, be gone. <laughs> 
And that's usually what happens. Retail usually gets shaken out. Um, they usually get scared. They're like, oh my God, I've lost my $100. I've lost my $1,000. Boo hoo. Who cares? It's nothing. People in this market are playing with billions of dollars and they try to take money away from you because you get scared about your $100. And what you're doing is you're leaving Bitcoin on the open market, which there is very little of. So they're trying to get that Bitcoin for cheaper from you. And that's ultimately what we're trying to help stop happen is by going over these types of charts and trading ranges, it's hopefully to help save retail from getting retailed and wrecked. So right now it does look like we have witnessed our spring. Um, one of the fun things I wanna go over again, first off the amount of volume that's come in here. What we do see is that the price spread is limited. So this is the law of effort and result. For those of you that are studying the Wyckoff stuff, you'll see we have a, a big price spread here. Um, and, well, actually, they're almost similar if you were to measure this one and this one. So it is a little disconcerting that we see less supply coming in is creating uh, this downward spread. But in the spring, that was to be expected. We are expected to see more supply come in to try to push the price down. Again, remembering that um, the glass node charts that we went over, which maybe we'll actually take a quick look at right now. Um, a big fan of these. Uh, this is Ethereum, but uh, I'll try to reopen the Bitcoin charts here. Effectively, um, there's very little Bitcoin on the open market right now. So we've gone over this yesterday. I think this is a really important, um, this is really important to understand. On the right-hand side of the screen here, let's actually zoom in. Uh, it'll make it a little bit more effective. Uh, so there are, is less and less Bitcoin on the open market day by day. So see, as the price started to rise, the amount of Bitcoin on the exchanges has started to drop dramatically. The reason this is extremely important to understand is because when Bitcoin's like the amount of Bitcoin on the open exchanges starts to decrease, the volatility and the liquidity of Bitcoin starts to decrease. Sorry, volatility goes up, liquidity goes down. So liquidity basically is an equal to or sometimes greater than the amount of volatility because it only needs a little bit of either buy or sell pressure to send the market in, in big moves. So again, we do have a downside potential of like 20 something thousand dollars, but it's hard to see how that would happen considering how many people like myself and people who have an enormous amount more money than me would just be buying up every single little Bitcoin that got shaken out at that moment. So as we see the amount of how many, we're down at around 12.6% of all Bitcoin is on the open exchanges. Well, just here in March, we're up at 16%. So we've lost four or 5% of all the open Bitcoin. And it's very likely that it's going to continue to decline as the price of Bitcoin increases. Again, that's extremely important to remember, and we will continue to highlight that because it represents a liquidity crisis in Bitcoin's price. So even though um, this spring that's forming here right now probably scares a bunch of people out, it's still right at the bottom of our trading range. We were expecting this spring yesterday. Um, we do see this nice spike in volume and supply, which is what we were really looking for. So the fact that we got what we wanted is like a great thing um, because it basically means we're doing a good job. <laughs> so I do suspect that that was the spring. Um, and we touched almost right to the POC. We did not, we did, we did not get it. And uh, we can, you know what, I'm going to give a shout out to Super Kitty who gave us one of her free indicators that she makes here. Uh, it's, it's basically a mixture of Bollinger Bands and moving averages here. Um, this is basically a time to buy is what the <laughs> is what it's saying. And if we go to the Hink and Ash, uh, Ashy charts here as well, we might even be able to witness the change of character going into this. So one of the nice parts about these types of candles is A, they remove some of the chaos. And again, I'll, I'll get rid of the, uh, uh, the ATR here just because it cleans up the chart, but it gets rid of some of the chaos. As soon as this turns green, we, uh, we might even be able to see that it's starting to turn green on the one hour. No, not yet, but very close. Like, look, right on the top of the POC line and just the opposite of what we saw yesterday. Instead of a declining uh, candle wicks to the downside, you're seeing ascending candle wicks to the upside. So it's very likely that we jump up above back into this trading range and then turn green, maybe even while we're on this live stream. Bitcoin and Ethereum are functioning very similarly. So if we jump over to where we were with Ethereum, here, here's where I said, where's the spring for Ethereum yesterday? Oh, there it is. Uh, another great moment to learn and study highlighted by look at the amount of supply that came in. And again, you're seeing a uh, limited, limited uh, result to so the bottom of this channel, again, at the top of the trading range, pretty much identical to Bitcoin. And that's what we want. 
we, this is exactly what we wanted. This um, again, not my prediction, more so what the trading range had said, right? I could be like, oh yeah, I called this yesterday. No, the trading range called it. Uh, we just happened to be able to decipher what the trading ranges are kind of saying. So Ethereum is did the exact same thing. If you compare the two, you can see the spring, high amounts of volume on both, uh, we'll actually go to the one hour here, high amounts of volume still at the top of the trading range. Now, the only downside here is Ethereum is is actually below the point of control. So there's a little bit more weakness in Ethereum, which also leads me to believe that we may be witnessing a, a larger trading range, something like this, where you see that this is your uh, primary support. This is your buying climax. This is your first selling, clim uh, selling climax into your uh, auto first automatic rally. And then a sec we might see a secondary test. So we may actually be witnessing a much larger and broader uh, accumulation range. Now, the downside is, is this accumulation range is extremely huge. This type of stuff is no fun because you can't trade it in any like in any fun manner without getting like it's just a dangerous thing to do. You're literally playing with fire trying to <laughs> trade trading ranges like this. So uh, the best of the best know that you wouldn't want to be playing around in here. But um, just like any good uh, investor, it's still an area of, of accumulation. You know, we, we went over yesterday, if we go to the daily, the potential that something like Ethereum has, which is we're, we're going to $2,600 at the very minimum. So even if we do see, uh, again, uh, kind of messy here, but um, you can see our primary accumulation range, which took uh, almost 800 days to accumulate. For those of you that have been following since the beginning of the channel, we've been pounding at the door saying, guys, we're in a bull market since the pandemic. Like, we're in a bull market. So you can accumulate every day. I kept saying, you guys can buy every day pretty much from here on out and you'll still be in the green. And look, it was right. Lo and behold, as insanity as that sounded, it was right. <laughs> You know, so, well, good, good. Congratulations. You were right. You look like a genius, even though I had nothing to do with it. All we're doing is following a methodology that's basically 120 years old. It's not, it's not new. Human nature hasn't changed. We're witnessing something very similar. So what you can also know, notice as well is that uh, if I hide, uh, well, first off, notice that the regression line is around 850. We did have some wicks that came down and almost touched that 850 mark. So it's very likely that even though it's very, it's a very dramatic and volatile trading range, this is a new trading range. This could be one of the last cycles of accumulation or reaccumulation before we go up. Now, we, we, you know, it begs the question again, is it, are we witnessing distribution, which is the opposite of accumulation? Um, are we gonna go lower? Uh, could we drop down to $600 before moving upwards? You wanna wait. One of the, like, here, if we go back to Bitcoin, it's, the story is a bit more clear, right? Um, it, part of this understanding is being patient because n these trading ranges are not fun for playing in leverage. The trading ranges prior to this, where you had such a thin spread, this is where if you are brave enough and talented enough and have like, let's say at least a few years on deck of being a good investor, this is where you can make enormous amounts of capital in short periods of time or in these very tight trading ranges, knowing that there's a lot of room for upside. In these volatile trading ranges, you're just asking to lose money. So again, uh, if you guys are new to this stuff, don't trade. You just want to keep accumulating because trading takes, well, first off, it takes capital. So you're either going to pay for the lesson or pay to get the lesson effectively. So again, don't, uh, don't get too emotional. One of the things retail investors are fantastic at doing is getting super emotional. They buy and sell. They're like, oh my God, Bitcoin's going down. Link's going up and band is going up. Oh my God. And then they jump from trade to trade and their account decreases <laughs> like... <sighs> because that's not how you make effective trades. You wanna get into a trade before it goes up, not after. And that's what most retail traders do wrong. So don't do the stupid shit wrong. Spend, your, spend the next two to three years studying. This is not the last bull market you will ever see, right? It's not the first bull market either. So get your head out of the clouds, right? This is a cycle that will repeat for your lifetime and beyond. The markets have been here before you were born and they will be here after you fucking die. Am I allowed to swear? Good, I'm allowed to swear. I, I warned YouTube before that I was gonna be swearing during this episode, um, so they won't mind. <laughs> Anyways, that's besides the point. So 
what we're doing here is trying to educate ourselves and others to remain calm so we know where we are in these trading ranges. So I'm actually going to clean up some of these horizontals here and uh, make a little bit more conjecture. I'm going to go over um, Ave, Band, Link, and Avalanche, some of our favorites in the DeFi play in the DeFi sector. We'll start with Link. Um, beautiful uh, Link is right at the previous all-time high. Um, and what's nice here too is a perfect opportunity to make a comparison. Um, look at the amount of, uh, okay, this is a perfect opportunity to learn more about effort versus result. So notice this volume supply coming in and how little it affected the market, right? A lot of supply, very little price movement. Almost the same amount of supply, almost, it is rising, but look at the effect of the price now. This, to me, signals that Link will, is about to go on a run. Now, we could, we'll, it's very volatile. There's a lot of retail traders in this sector, more than any other sector around the planet because there's no real barrier to entry. So the volatility is coming from weak hands of, of people who are jumping from trade to trade. Don't do that. Again, if you're going to build a trade, the points to enter, we're back, we're back here. All of this. Even, even here, this was where you wanted to be building your position. So this is why I suggest if you are wanting to build positions, it should take months to do so. If we just measure, like let's ignore the trading range. We won't even get into that. Just let's measure the time here. That's 160 days of A, watching Bitcoin go crazy, Ethereum go crazy, multiple other tokens go crazy. Well, you should have been accumulating link at a decreased price, knowing that eventually that trade will pay off. And that's one of the hardest things. Most retail traders will jump in right here, right before it's probably going to come down one more time, again, because of the volatility of the retail trader. And then they're going to see Bitcoin go up at the same time as link is going down or something. And then they're going to take that loss and move into Bitcoin right before Bitcoin comes down again. Don't do that. I swear to God, like it's the, it's the most common thing is that retail traders get what we call retailed. It's that they don't know how to make entries over these long-term accumulation periods, right? Let's say, again, you're following the strategy of being a good investor. That's 160 days. That's almost that's like four or five months of, hey, every month, it's the 11th of the month, I'm going to buy more link. That's flexing the investor muscles, and that's what you should do. That's the best way to do it. Now, if you want to be ballsy, and you've been a good investor for a long time, and you've learned how to keep showing up to the markets, and you're not getting emotional, and you've done your homework, and you've done your study, and you're looking at something like band, like we had gone over um, in the private group, and you're like, wow, look at this. Here's a perfect horizontal trading range. It's an inverse head and shoulders. We even have the POC line at the bottom of the trading range. So we've got this, this sexy inverse head and shoulders taken. That was a horrible drawing, but you get the idea. Inverse head and shoulders like this. Um, our private group newsletter went out at around 550. I made my entries at seven bucks. I'm still in this trade. And we're up almost 40 to 50% on the trade already. Like, great. That was a well-executed campaign. That took well, first off, it took months for this to form. It took another three or four weeks for us to identify the finalization of this inverse head and shoulders, and then to take the entries as it started to break out of that trading range. This is not done overnight, guys. If you think you're going to get rich overnight trading and investing, you've got another lesson coming, which is probably a lot losing a lot of money. There are two very important parts that you need to understand. Number one, inflex those investor muscles, which means show up monthly and keep accumulating assets that you find interesting. Do that for the rest of your life and you'll be surprised how rich you are at the end of this game. Now, secondarily, with band here, if we go on the smaller time frames, what we're going to do is uh, make a little bit of a highlight. Uh, we want to make a little bit of a highlight using some of these fun uh, momentum indicators. So, uh, again, one of the uh, group members made this, uh, made a few of these actually. Um, so we'll look at them at one at a time. So this is a kind of a Bollinger Band, uh, and actually likes to use the Hike and Ashy uh, candles instead for this one because it'll stand out a little more. Okay, so let's take, let's notice two things. Number one, see the tightness of the Bollinger Band uh, as it as it broke above. This these last final moments here. The test on the top of the band was an extremely important part. Another test on the top of the band. And then again, the breakdown of the band into in, inside the structure. So what we're looking for band out of the breakout of the band, Jesus, that's like a, <laughs> a little bit cluttered of a sentence, but nonetheless, we're actually looking for the finalized closes here. 
This is going to be very powerful. Um, Band has a lot of potential. The DeFi sector in general has a lot of potential. But again, this is one of those areas where you could be accumulating for, for months, hundreds of days before you get to a point where you start to see this, this real growth in, in, in market cycle. So don't get ahead of yourself by trying to become a professional trader thinking that, oh my God, the pandemic's here. Like I'm going to be a professional trader tomorrow. Like that's not the case. Most people will lose money thinking like that because it's like playing an instrument. You, you're actually going to um, probably end up costing yourself way more than you can afford to lose because you need to be able to, well, A, be a good investor and be able to recognize these longer term potentials, which means you're used to not getting emotional about your interest in this sector. But even more importantly, again, we don't no, we don't want you to lose money guys we want we want you to be able to be more successful and the first step you need to make is by being buddha says be a good investor guys <laughs> um so again band is looking really sweet here we had a really nice run since the bottom uh we had a nice retest around seven dollars pretty much right near my entry i almost got stopped out there uh but i didn't which is nice because it was real and close and look at that we're already up 50 50 percent this is one of the downsides to playing in, in some of these alternative assets um, is they're extremely volatile, but that can again bode to your favor. Uh, so here's another kind of, uh, kind of fun one that, they, that she had created here for us. It just shows us the ultimate support and resistance lines. So again, this is kind of a effectively draw, like it, it will draw trading ranges for you to some degree. So as you can see here, um, we have our resistance where we kept meeting sell resistance and our buy resistance effectively too. So we're, we're likely seeing our primary support, um, our automatic rally, uh, our, our buying climax, our automatic rally, our secondary test, um, our first part of the spring. And look how much volume is coming in to create this little movement. So I'm a little worried here. Not, uh, it's still a little bit too early in this uh, trading range, but these, uh, these, these indicators are kind of fun. You can do them manually. You don't, you don't, again, you don't need to use them. I actually think often making things simpler is better. Like I try to remove as much information from the chart as possible. Like I, that's why I often will even use the area chart as, as one of my favorites because it just gets rid of all of the conflicting information while you're trading and be like, great, here's one, there's no red or green candles, nothing, just the price going up and down and here's my volume. I can make an asserted decision based off less information. Um, Ave has been really nice, uh, really, really beautiful rising gradient bottom with your spring here. Um, and then again, your backup and your breakout. So uh, the whole DeFi sector is showing a lot of strength. I think it's intelligent to look at this DeFi sector kind of as your venture capital bag, which is basically a small entry could be a life changing game because uh, like think about Twitter, for instance, if you were able to get even a thousand dollars into Twitter when it was in um, its venture capital seed stage, you'd have made hundreds of millions of dollars, right? I mean, so even a thousand dollars in Bitcoin when it first started wouldn't be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And that's, I think, the best way to look at these plays is you don't want to over position yourself too much. You just want to put in there what you can walk away from and know that it's an asymmetrical bet, which means it could be worth a lot more or nothing. And, and use that to your advantage. So you limit your investment cap based off that volatility and understanding that it could be worth nothing or it could be worth like hundreds of times or thousands of times more. So again, I think a, the most important part of this for anyone to take away is to be patient. Like there's so much to be said about patience, especially when the volatility here, look at band up 14% down nine eleven percent like you know this is again this is where newbie traders would get wrecked right there they would jump in here they would lose the 10 or 12 percent they would get scared um and be like oh my god i did made the trade wrong and then they'll exit with a loss and then they'll run into something else that's near the top and then take another loss that's not how you play this game uh you, you really really want to practice uh being and flexing those investor muscles before you run in and uh, try to make a lot of money trading so back to the bitcoin chart here we're seeing what i believe to be the finalization of the spring uh, again we, as we see the candles are rising versus yesterday when the candles were following so if you did join us for yesterday's show um i, I again we were we were like oh look at the top we're starting to fall it seems pretty likely that we're going to turn around here we did um, and now we have the opposite of what we were seeing yesterday so i do suspect we see another red candle a little bit higher just like this before changing the trend and continuing upwards before we um, 
basically see an, an SOS, maybe as high as forty seven, forty six thousand dollars I just don't see us going lower at this moment, especially because of all the data we went over here on the Glassnode Studio, which is that Bitcoin's open market supply is decreasing day by day. Here, how much... How, like, yeah, look at the decrease. You lo We went from... We're losing a 2% of Bitcoin, bam, in, in single chunks. So these guys are just going, buying as much as they can off the retail market and sh shoveling it off into their cold wallets. Another great way to look at this, um, shout out to Glassnode, by the way, but an another great way to look at this, um, where's my uh, addresses? Okay, so let's see uh, addresses with a balance of one Bitcoin or below. Um, so here we can see uh, since March, addresses with one Bitcoin has been increasing, but it's kind of maxed out. Whereas if we look at addresses over uh, 100 Bitcoin uh, or, or even 1,000 Bitcoin, you actually look at the increase of, of wallets over 1,000 Bitcoin. That's, that means the whales are buying more than people that can afford single Bitcoins. That's, they are in control of the price here. Right, so keep that in mind, and we know that if they're that in control of the price, and you have people like Dan Moorhead of Pantera Capital aiming at hundreds of thousands of dollars of Bitcoin, that's where we're going. So don't get scared in these markets like that. The re they're trying to scare you by shaking the tree and getting you to drop your Bitcoin, like the half Bitcoin or the quarter Bitcoin that you bought. Because look, there are less of you now than there are of them. Look, look again, the amount of one Bitcoin accounts is actually decreasing where the amount of 1000 Bitcoin accounts is increasing like a dramatically here. From December 18th, you, you see a huge uptick. Um, over 2,422 versus in the beginning of December there, um, only 2,000 accounts, which is still huge. Since May, that's... Uh, uh, well, actually, maybe we can even go and give ourselves more chart time just to, to, to make it more valuable. Look at the amount of accounts. Okay, so this is since May 2008 with the accounts over 1,000 Bitcoin. So since... Um, and actually, hold on, that's not a good, let's make this more sensible. Okay, here we go. So the amount of accounts with Bitcoin over a thousand has been doing nothing but increasing since um, we hit Bitcoin's price at around uh, $9,800. So we effectively hit the bot, like to some degree, you could even call six to seven grand, the, the, I think the perfect middle ground of where the whales started accumulating again. And this dramatic rise of, of accounts over a thousand Bitcoin in their wallet means that they are in charge of this asset. So don't get scared. Um, that's the last thing you want to do is get scared out of the bull market, right? Like, r again, right as the bull market is still effectively starting. We're so, so early on in this. Um, I'm going to take, uh, let's see, what else do we want to go over? Oh, yeah, Polkadot was the last one. Polkadot is another one in our DeFi uh, bag. Where's Dot? What? i got to re-add it to the screen here, I guess. Um, let's go Dot to Tether. That's fine. Okay, dot to tether. Let's try this one more time. Ah, okay, there we go. Uh, okay, we'll go scroll out here on the daily for dot. Um, dot was one of the fun ones where, again, a beautiful horizontal trading range. This is how you, this is what a cup and handle should like should look like. It should take months to progress, um, and they usually yield about a hundred percent plus or minus about forty percent. So out of the breakout of the box. 130%. This is probably somewhat of the top for DOT for now um, before we see a fair amount of accumulation or like reaccumulation, like a, maybe a much, much nicer, longer reaccumulation range. And again, look how much sell volume and sell pressure came in more than there was buy. So we had a huge up, but again, diminished. Um, wow, actually really, really impressive to see how little um, sub um, that affected the price too, which is again another another important part to keep uh, keep in mind. This limited price spread um, came from this amount of selling volume in, which is is pretty impressive. So it, maybe what we do is we we see an accumulation range um, before going even much higher on on polka dot. You know, there, it's it's always interesting to look at how you would want to build a portfolio. Um, uh, these are not hugely weighted for me because again even a thousand dollars in something like dot or band over 10 years could yield 
let's say a thousand X, so you don't need a ton of money in there. Whereas Bitcoin, Ethereum, they've got a big track record, you know, they've got the branding, they've got the name behind them, they've got huge companies already building on it. Um, so I would suspect that even though DOT has potential, Ethereum could easily outpace DOT no problem, and in fact I'm betting on that. But at the same point, I don't want to bet against it, so I just have a little bit of my portfolio allocated to DOT, BAND, um, Ave, A Avalanche. Oh, right, that was the next one. Avalanche is one of my favorites. Um, and if you guys want to know why Avalanche is one of my favorites, is because the tech is brilliant. Now, I'm not smart enough to know a whole lot about tech, so I listen to people who are smarter than me. And my friends that are smarter than me in the private bear group, uh, when he says Avalanche, I go, okay, great, I'm buying more. Beautiful long-term trading range with Avalanche. As soon as we dipped below and jumped back up, it's been nothing but up since then as well. So again, what you want to do is learn to identify these horizontal trading ranges. And as soon as you see backup phases out of the breakout, this is usually a good spot to initiate a trade so that you don't have to drag through. Now, again, from an accumulation standpoint, look, Avalanche has given you 104 days to accumulate within a 30% range before going up. 100%, right? So all you had to do was grind through 30% for 100 days to get a 100 plus percent return. That's kind of the best way to look at some of this stuff is find those accumulation ranges, very similar with what we just saw with DOT. Again, I'll go back at DOT here, right? You're looking at an accumulation range of 100 and something plus days at around 30%, almost identical to Avalanche, except uh, Avalanche did not create a cup and handle. It was a, more of a, a reaccumulation with a spring, very similar to what we had gone over in, in this one uh, as well. So uh, this little dip down in phase C. So I do suspect that building um, a venture capital portfolio in the DeFi sector is going to yield amazing results for you in the long term, uh, or, or for myself on the long term, because this is not financial advice for anybody. Um, and then if we go back to Bitcoin, our favorite here, and we let's start, we can look at the smaller time frames. Yeah, we can still see we're getting candles, uh, candle wicks that are a little higher than the, than the previous um, volume spike. It would be nice to see another big, another big spring uh, volume spike come in here and see less price movement and stay pr relatively, uh, I guess, in line with this POC. Once we get above, once if we can, once we get back above thirty six thousand, I do believe that will be the continuation. And just like yesterday's video, if we start to break below down the previous trading range, this will ultimately turn into distribution. Um, shout out to uh, Jerry as well, because um, what one of the things here is if you go and you look at uh, Ethereum on these smaller time frames, um, it was a nice rounded distributive top before. Um, we saw the spring start to come in. And, and we had hypothesized this too, that what we were witnessing um, was actually um, this type of reaccumulation pattern, although in a rising gradient bottom, where you jump up and then the final parts of the spring actually come down into the trading range, which is kind of what we're seeing here. So if, you, if we go back to Bitcoin, and instead of, instead of draw, drawing the rising gradient bottom, we only look at it as a horizontal trading range, um, you can see that it's uh, probably... It's got a, a, a fair, a fairly high degree of similarity between these two. The breakout and then a slide back down in, into the, near the top part of the trading range. Um, so again, this POC line at around 34,000 is gonna be pretty important. If we start to close below these major, um, this major trading range, I hope and pray to God we see $23,000, that'd be so amazing. It would mean a huge opportunity to accumulate more Bitcoin at like half price that it is today. So because of my interest in that, I doubt that we would really see that because who am I? I'm just like a tiny little fish in the jungle compared to the people that are buying hundreds of millions of dollars, like again, to this massive increase of people who own thousand plus Bitcoin. I don't own a thousand Bitcoin, not even close. Um, so again, we know that these guys are in control of the market, both to the up and to the downside. And their targeting is into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So even if we do get a quick shakeout, it's, it'll be very temporary. So don't don't get scared. Don't get scared as a retail investor. Just keep on uh, keep on hitting that investment cycle um, effectively as well. So uh, I'm going to take the rest of this episode to go over your guys' thoughts and questions. Um, that's kind of one of the fun parts about this live stream. Um, so we'll dive right in. Thank you guys all for joining us today. By the way, if you can. 
give us a thumbs up if you like this content. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that little notification bell. That way, anytime we go live, you guys will be notified. Um, also, you know, just in general, be patient, be kind to yourselves. It's really easy to get into a bull market and think, again, this is the only bull market you'll ever see. It's, it's not the case. Um, this is just the start of this bull market. So you're going to have plenty of opportunities throughout your lifetime to flex those investor muscles. So during this process, there's more opportunities. Don't think that you've missed out. Don't get upset if yourself, if you're losing because you've made bad mistakes. You have a lifetime to figure this out. Don't rush it. Okay. It's like really important. Don't, don't rush the learning experience. You know, there's, and, and really there is no go, like you can't go to the gym and, and get gains in one day. It takes time. So the sooner you recognize that, the better off you'll be. Okay. Let's take a look at your guys' thoughts and questions. Um, I'm gonna have a little sip of my drink here. Loop ring. Oh, hey, loop ring is another uh, interesting DeFi play. Again, small amounts of capital in in the DeFi sector is a, is a pretty pretty intelligent idea from my point. Don't miss hex. I'm not a fan of hex, personally speaking. There are much better plays in my opinion. I mean, Richard Hart is a great salesman. Um, nothing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, it's just it doesn't it doesn't meet my quality standards and it doesn't meet my tech team's quality standards. I would much rather own, like if you were like, hey, do you want a million dollars in, in Avalanche or Hex? I'd be like, well, definitely give me the Avalanche. <laughs> give a shit about Hex in comparison. Because if you gave me a million dollars in Hex, I could go liquidate it on the open market right now and absolutely destroy the price. And that to me doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make me feel confident about its growth in any way, shape or form. Um, I lost... 20k in four hours f my life yeah that sounds like you're you knew don't don't do that um, unless you have like hundreds of thousands of dollars to just muck about with you should probably learn how to be a good investor first <laughs> sorry to hear about your loss but that's uh that's the cost of a lesson i guess or you can join our private group www.arcanebear.com forward slash private and you can join a private mastermind group where we're going over these trading ranges and where we're all constantly learning and helping out one another uh, and also less risk than losing the 20,000 because if you're not happy with the group we'll give you a refund I don't care like we don't want any unhappy people in our mastermind um, so try that let's see where to buy Bitcoin I've already gone over this uh, how to be a good investor it's like the gym just keeps showing up. Jude Vern says, hey, Tio, I noticed you follow Kava. I like the price action. Kava, again, I would put this in, in, my, in my DeFi bag, which is venture capital, small amounts of capital. Who knows? It could be worthless, right? It doesn't even really matter about the tech. Like I, part, of, part of this, you guys, you want to understand that it doesn't matter about the tech. Sometimes it's really about adoption and use case. So if no one adopts it, it's not worth anything. Uh... And that's a, that's a pretty big, important part. So I think what you want to first understand is how venture capital works. The guys who invested in Twitter in the early days, I mean, it could have been worth nothing. They weren't able to sell it until it hit the open market, unless they were selling private equity. And, and even, even then, you know, it wasn't a surefire bet. They were putting, like Gary Vee is like, yeah, I put like 10 grand in Twitter, and now it's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, that's how venture capital works. You put money in something that has a great potential and you walk away for like 10 or 15 years knowing that you could very easily lose that 10 grand. Um, but if you come back and they happen to be successful, well, mamma mia, that's how you call uh, that. Yeah, that's what venture capital is <laughs> effectively. Um, we already went over DOT in the earlier parts of this video. Please check that out if you guys are interested. Um, uh, Alexandra says, hey, Arcane Bear, thanks for your everyday streams and information. Do you plan to receive a Costa Rican passport in the future? I am finalizing my Costa Rican residency. So I will be getting like, uh, look, look, look at this. I could put my hair up every now and then. Hey, look, yeah, there we go. We've got a mohawk now. Um, so I will, I'm a, I'm, I'll be a permanent resident in Costa Rica here, but probably by the end of this month. So that's kind of fun. Let's see what else we got here. Move this closer so I can actually see some of your guys' questions without thinking too much. Um, Okay, are you considering any small caps? Yeah, we went over that, but I'm again, I'm more interested in the DeFi sector. 
if it's not DeFi, or more importantly, if the tech's not good, I guess maybe the DeFi is the wrong word. If the tech doesn't meet the tech team standards at the Arcane Bear, then I don't, I don't touch it because I don't know enough to know what the tech is, uh, but I trust them. Yeah, so kind of the same reason why I have a lawyer and an accountant is because I, I don't know. I don't know. Are you kidding me? Like the amount of ridiculousness that go, are you really, I, you think I'm going to know anything about that? No, no. Oh, tech. Thank you. Tech team. <laughs> That's an important part. Um, let's see here. Hey, Tio, my brother. Thank you. S Sebastian. Good to see you. Um, James Dean says, I'm into Bitcoin, Ethereum, ADA, Link, dot .vet, in that order, ready for the run. Yeah, again, guys, that's how you want to play a good, invest and a good investor strategy is just keep showing up um, and not think too much. Let's actually, um, let's actually go back to this one. Let's see here. Can we do this? Does this work right now? Uh, bear with me for a second here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, boom, boom. There we go. So we're watching Bitcoin still on the hourly in the background while we answer questions then instead. We don't need to see full screen on my beautiful face. It's no, <gasps> no, give me my VPR back. Oh, there we go, okay. I, I like my VPR. Uh, I like my point of control. Oh God, I did it again. There we go, okay. I'm trying to delete the green lines. Okay, uh, you sound Canadian. I did grow up in Canada. But uh, I'm scared of that country now. Uh, if I could, I'd try to claim refugee status there. But that's, as you know, they'd be like, why? What is your personal background prior to crypto? Uh, so I bought my first Bitcoin at 90 bucks because I worked in the marketing and advertising sector doing search engine optimization. And we were buying lots of servers to build websites. And they told us, hey, we'll give you a discount on all the servers you buy if you bought pay in Bitcoin. I'm like, well, this is a great utility. You're telling me all I got to do is use this thing. You're going to give me 50% done. Uh, so that's what we did. Actually, um, maybe what we'll do is we'll do like I've got three private memberships of a year only for half. Uh, no, let's say two. I don't want to make anyone who just purchased a membership for the year bad. Let's uh, feel bad. Um, I'm going to come up with something and offer like one to three private memberships for half price, but you have to use the Arcane Bear co token uh, because it's a community experiment and it's our, basically our rewards token. We give it away to help incentivize our community, um, but also it's a way to get discounts. Um, so we don't run discounts often. Uh, but anyways, my, the pr point of that question was my, my background prior to this was in, in the like search engine optimization, building websites. Uh, so the tech sector to some degree. Uh, so I bought Bitcoin at 90 bucks because we were buying servers for half price because of Bitcoin. So that led me to why you might want to buy Bear and pay half price for a membership. <laughs> Anyways, different story. If you want email info at arcanebear.com, we'll leave three open for that. Um, they'll help you out. Uh, let's see. Arcane Bear, I bought my first Ethereum when I was 14. What? When you were 14 years old, you bought Ethereum? Oh, congratulations. Wait, did you mean $14? No, you mean 14 years old. Look, Steffi, whoever is in your life that that can help you buy Ethereum when you were 14 years old is I'm Im impressive. Uh, maybe that's your parents. Good on them. I sold 1.5 of them. Oh, no. I got six of them when the price was $220. What are you doing with thousands of dollars when you're 14 years old? Anyways, that's interesting. You bought uh, PC gaming. Should I hold now for the rest long term to take profit? Look, Steffi, if you're 14, I don't know. I did, like, I hope you're saying you're 14 when you bought Ethereum because that's absolutely amazing. I wish more people were more financially educated at fucking 15. That would be amazing. But no, Steffi, you shouldn't sell them. You should keep building a portfolio. That's my personal advice, not financial advice, but my personal advice. And if you want a computer, go fucking mow more lawns or do whatever you need to do for business to buy the computer. Don't spend your portfolio. Yeah. There you go. Um, I like your new setup, Bear. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm having fun here. Got I like the new the new setup myself as well. It's quite fun. Makes it easy to do these live streams. So hey, every day, guys, around one to three p.m., we'll be live for the rest of the bull market. So please click that subscribe button and uh, join us uh, and join the private Bear family. Um, SNX. Okay, we'll go over SNX at the end of this. We'll write that down. Um, do you think ICX have a big potential? <laughs> Again, and, and all of those things, guys, unless it's Bitcoin or Ethereum, I would throw them in what I would call the venture capital sector, which is don't put too much money in that because it would probably be very likely it's going to be worth nothing. Okay, keep that in mind. 
Um, why put it in the description if you're not going to go over it? I already went over it there, Snoop a loop. Please uh, refrain from being silly. Just rewind. Be kind, rewind, and understand I already went over them. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we already went over those. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you're just bad at listening. I mean, there's short bursts of information. I, I don't know how much information you need. Like, it's pretty simple sometimes there, Snoop a loop. Uh, how will you scale out near the, the, the cycle top? Um, great question. Okay, it's a great question. Nate Rivers says, how will you scale out near the cycle top? Uh, our cycle top, I'm looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I like building business. I own a, a ginger tonic company here. I'm a private equity investor in Digi, Digifox. Hey, by the way, guys, um, go to digifox.com. Wait, hold on, digifox.finance. Full disclosure, Nicholas Merton the, da, from Data Dash, the CEO. Fantastic wallet and application. You can earn um, APY interest on your Ethereum and USDC stablecoins. They've got an amazing platform. Go download Digifox. Um, and why was I saying that? Oh yeah, how would you scale out near the top? I usually try to scale out into other investments, like companies that I build. You know, generally guys, investing and trading isn't gonna be what makes you like, well, A, the most happy, or B, the most fulfilled. Those kind of go together. You wanna find what really drives you in life. When I started the Arcane Bear, my main goal here was to communicate value. I love doing this stuff. So for me, I'm doing what I love, um, and that's usually how we scale my portfolio out into other investments. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And download Digifox, by the way. <laughs> oh, there we go. The first, uh, the first change in trend candle right off the spring. There we go. I love that. God damn, that's sexy. I love these trading range uh, lessons. They're so sexy. Ave, SNX, and Uni. Um, SNX and Uni, again, they would fit in my DeFi play, but I'll, I'll put um, SNX and Uni. Um, we'll take a look at that afterwards. Do you have any advice on exit strategies? Um, if you see life-changing gains at any point in any portfolio, in any investment you make, change your life, right? Maybe you wanted to always wanted to do like a three-month Vipassana. Go do that. Invest in that. Maybe you always wanted to go visit Raja Ampat and go snorkeling or scuba diving and you need to get, go do that. I try to diversify into life experiences because you could, can die tomorrow and the money is useless. So invest in yourself. And often that's by building a business that you're interested in. Like I said, I own a, a ginger tonic company here. Hopefully we'll be national and doing six figures a year from that company alone. Um, but again, it takes time. We're already like six and a half years into that where we've got a product and a brand and a label and all the nutritional facts. And we're registered by the health authority of Costa Rica. Like it's a slow process to build business. So again, I usually try to reinvest in my own interests. That's my exit strategy. Um, Lenny with a $20 donation to Kiva and show. Okay. So here we go. Thank you guys. Lenny, we're actually going to perfect, perfect time to go visit Kiva as well. For those of you that don't know, Kiva is a nonprofit organization that makes no APY loans to the underbanked and underserved. Um, every time, uh, let's go and uh, make a loan right now. We'll find a woman somewhere, uh, cause they're usually the best entrepreneurs, at least in terms of paying back. <laughs> Uh, so we've got uh, Tajikistan. Let's go. Let's find one who's the closest to being funded. We've only got forty dollars in there right now. We'll add more money next time. Um, but let's see here. Uh, all loans. Uh, so again, uh, you can make a loan to someone around the world who would be underbanked and underserved and would never be able to get a regular loan. I have to sign in actually. Okay. So let's go back to my face here for a second while we sign in. I don't like sharing login details on the on the main screen while this stuff. So thank you to Lenny. We're going to make a contribution to Kiva and help fund another entrepreneur today. Um, I really appreciate that. It's always fun to do this. Uh, let's see here. There's my account for Kiva. And um, okay, there we go. Make a loan, change a life. So guys, when you make loans here too, the entrepreneurs pay you back. So it takes like four, six months but uh, you get your money back and then you can re-lend that money out again. So we've got 37 bucks to loan out. Let's just go ahead and go, uh, where, let's see here, um, $500 to go. These ladies are pretty close. Where are they from? Is this China or, t I, I don't know. Let's, let's take a look here. Let's find some women to loan some money to. Uh, not my, f see, I always try to find a better lending 
like field partner just because Kiva gives you gives us the option to look at the field partners. Let's take a look here. Uh, okay, this one's good enough. So Darabo's story was born in 1983 in Yavan, Tajikistan. She is uh, a trustworthy and pleasant woman. She has four children, and her uh, and her and her husband manage a business. They've been engaged in agriculture for 10 years. She works very hard to improve her business and make it uh, more stable. They grow different kinds of vegetables, which are sold in bulk to customers. So she's asking for a loan with Kiva from the Imon partner for buying more seeds to help grow agriculture. Will you give her this opportunity? So let's go ahead. Um, we've only got 37 bucks in our account right now, so we'll just go ahead. We'll make that loan. Uh, uh, to Del Rabo. Uh, so we'll complete that order. Bang, bang. There you go. Helping another entrepreneur pursue their dreams. Um, this is one of my favorite parts. I really appreciate that for the super chat there, Lenny. Uh, there you guys go. If you want to as well, uh, in the links down below, you can join the Arcane Bear team where you can all we can make loans together. So as you can see, um, we just made this loan to Del Rabo and you can join in. You can uh, We can help fund these entrepreneurs together. So far, we have 16 team members and from you guys alone have made $1,000 in loans because of this. I'm really grateful for that. So again, Arcane, it's like in the links below, arcanebear.com forward slash Kiva if you want to join the Arcane Bear team and help fund some other entrepreneurs. Thanks for that super chat, Lenny. Let's take a look at a few more of your guys' thoughts and questions. All the way down to the bottom so I can keep up with everyone's thoughts. I'm in it. Uh, Sadie says, uh, do you declare ayahuasca to Vipassana? They're vastly different. No, nope, not the same. Um, I'm seeing a slight collection of blast off. Uh, yeah, so we were looking for this spring. Now the spring came in and we're seeing it turn around. I'm, I'm glad that we start to see the Hike and Ashy trend change on our live stream. That's always nice. Uh, it means that we are really close to nailing these. We caught the top yesterday, caught the bottom today. Live stream at 3 p.m. seems to be the way to go. Um, Sadi Hernandez says, you rock. Well, thank you guys. You guys rock because of your support. Um, we get to do fun things like this and shout out to today's uh, actually I know I apologize for this guys But um, we're gonna run a little quick app. No, we'll actually we'll do it at the end of the stream uh, We partner with BlockFi so we do make other loans uh, because of BlockFi that one was specifically because of the the shout out from uh, uh, the uh, New Zealand there crypto addicted arcane bear. I started watching you in, during the 2019 bull run. We never had a 2019 bull run um, you mean the automatic rally, I believe. I'm 21 and have been building my portfolio since. You inspire me, and when I'm rich, I want to move into nature. Thank you so much. You know, I, you know first off, Crypto Addicted, thank you for the support. Um, and I believe you mean the automatic rally of 2019. Make sure you're doing your homework, uh, because the bull run was actually 2017 to 2018. That's a different story. Uh, when we went to $13,000, that was not a bull run. That was the start of the accumulation range. But more importantly, what I want to share a quote with you that I have always found helpful, which is that if you live in accordance with nature, you'll never be poor. But if you live under the guise of what other people think of you, you'll never be rich. So crypto addicted, remember to go outside, feel the, the wind in, in the air, and you, you're already rich and close to nature. Uh, and you're already wealthy. A lot of it has to do with the gratitude for what you have. So everyone... If you get a moment today, sit down for five minutes, 10 minutes, close your eyes, say thank you to yourself. Be grateful to yourself for showing up um, and being patient. It's so, such a valuable thing to do. Um, Litecoin, okay, so we've got SNX and Litecoin. What happened to the Tether lawsuit? I'm not, not sure. Um, guys, if you spam the channel like Razin here, we'll just ban you, so don't do that. Um, yeah, don't spam the channel like Rosin. Okay, there you go, Rosin. You just did exactly what I told you not to do. Um, <laughs> so silly. Okay. Um, so Rosin's getting his message hidden there. Let's uh, go back. So guys, um, just before we jump into the charts here and go over a few of the other ones that you guys are interested in, um, please remember that investing is a long-term strategy. One of the most important things you can do is uh, show up and consistently keep investing. Uh, and let's go. 
sorry, I'm just, um, there we go. Yeah, got rid of the spammers there, guys, I know. Um, okay, and then, and then we'll go back to uh, trading view. We can see, um, there we go. Again, Bitcoin starting to turn around here. I wonder if we're seeing the same thing on, on Ethereum. No, Spring has not yet turned around on Ethereum. Although, yeah, actually, look at that. Just a little bit of the green on the Heiken Ashi chart there. Uh, that's nice to see. Uh, both Bitcoin and Ethereum may be turning around here. So we'll just keep chilling live. Okay, so you guys want me to go over Litecoin, SNX, um, Um, Ethereum and Link, we went over Ethereum and the Link in the beginning parts of this episode before we started the community chat. So, um, Genus, just rewind. I don't want to go over, re go over it again. Um, Thrasian says, I sold high today. No, it sounds like you were high and you sold. It had nothing to do with us. Now waiting on making a decision if I should go long or wait. I'm grateful for your unbiased and viable help to all of us. Well, I, I appreciate this, the, co the kind comment at the end of there. Um, but again... If you're spot buying and selling, which it sounds like you are, you should just find a day every month that you have revenue and you should add more to your portfolio because it sounds like you're highly emotional. Um, Ego Alter Gaming says, do you remember me? I told you I lost $100. How can I make that back from $128? First off, that's pennies. Like I've seen gas fees cost more than $120, Alter Ego Gaming. So if you're young and learning this, you, you, you need to calm down. You're doing everything wrong, it sounds like. And the only way you're going to get it right is if you follow the guidance that we gave you countless times before, which is that flex the investor muscles by getting yourself a fucking job and adding to your portfolio every month. That's, that's it. If you're trading and you're 14 years old, you're just going to lose money. So, so don't do that. Um, let's see here. Uh, I love the coloring and charts. How do you change those? Cool, fun question. If you go up to the top right hand corner of the bars here, you can change the body color um, anyway over here. We could have purple. We could have, I like the blue and pink. So that's what we've done. Uh, these are in the top right hand corner of your settings as well. So um, just rewatched your coffee vlog at the start of COVID. The thought and prediction of the world events were a bit crazy, but man, you were pretty spot on. You've helped me a lot this year. Thank you. Yeah, I remember when we first made uh, predictions about um, COVID in the end of January, and people thought I was crazy when I told them we were going into 24-month lockdowns. It's like, you're so full of shit. Like, we're, we're, we'll be fine. It's just the flu. I'm like, you guys suck at studying epidemiology. I, I trust my scientific in intuitions much more than whoever you think you are. <laughs> I've been studying science my entire life. It's one of my favorite subjects. Uh, so thank you for that, Pal Nosh. I, um, I know, it's a, it's a fun one. Um, Oh God, you know, it, it sucks that we have to put so many people in, in a timeout here because they just don't know how to use a chat properly. Um, it's really, really discouraging. Um, let's take a look. Spammers are just a cry for help. Great information you have here. Cesar Roberto says, keep spreading the wealth and the love. Thank you, I, I love that. Um, what do you think of, is happening to ETH at the moment? Um, the price is moving. <laughs> I love when people ask questions like that because uh, it, it reflects, look guys, if you're asking simple questions, one of my favorite parts is to just spend a lot of time studying. There is so much um, to, that goes into learning where you are in the markets. Like you're not going to get it and you're not going to get the answer you want by, by going what's happening to Ethereum because you show very little understanding of the market. We're in a bull market. We're in a bull market. That's all you need to know. If you're smart enough to know what that means, that is all you need to know. We are in a bull market. We've been in a bull market since March 11th. <laughs> so keep, please, please keep that in mind. God, I wish I had that vice at 14. Yeah, me too. Hats, plug in, still holding Raven. No, I look guys, I change my portfolio like on a day-to-day -day basis because I also do trading. Right? So again, my trading, my investment portfolio is like Bitcoin and Ethereum. My trading portfolio may be different like 12 hours from now than it was 12 hours earlier, right? That's important to remember. Um, you look like a peculiar individual who's deeply into spirituality, but also money. Very chilled vibe at the same time. Seems like you have a lion inside you. Yeah, I've got some fire. That's for sure. Um, I, I definitely love throwing down and talking nonsense. Um, 
these guys saying sell it all lol i know uh, where's our moderator let's ride kick those guys out ban them give them a timeout uh router says hey tio what's up i really appreciate the sophisticated know-how thank you guys okay so you would uh, a bunch of you would ask for snx and litecoin uh and we're going to go over that we've already gone over ave band dot link and uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum all in the beginning of the video. So if you want to find those, please just rewind. I don't want to re-go over everything every time someone asks the same question. That would be very, that would be boring for me. Okay, but now what we're going to do is we're going to look at SNX and, um, we're going to look at SNX and Litecoin. So SNX, Synthetics, is an interesting platform. Let's add it to our watch list here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll make some conjecture on F SNX here. Do you combine Wyckoff and Elliott waves? Uh, I'm much more interested in in Wyckoff solely. Uh, Elliott waves are good too, but it's it can be very distracting. Oh yeah, look at this. We already had SNX charted up. Gotta love that. Um, as you can see, we saw a pr very beautiful accumulation pattern. You could almost go so far to say this was the head and shoulders, although it's not clearly defined. Very similar to what we saw in band, almost identical. The backup phase here was very short and an explosive move out. So currently, again, if, I'm not, if I was not already in this trade, I wouldn't enter here. What I would wait is for the volatility to settle down and I would wait for a larger accumulation range. Um, band is a great example for why that patience or Ave is a great example for why that patience can be important. You can see these big 20 to 30% drawdowns so from uh, just an investor standpoint, sure, you know, you want to accumulate stuff like this every month. Um, but in terms of like finding a viable trade, we left that trading range already. Uh, at 142 days, you could have accumulated before it broke out of the box effectively. Um, so now is not the time to be accumulating, or sorry, trading, like building trades, unless you're just on a long-term accumulation range to try to get to like X amount of, SNX in your portfolio for that that long term potential, um, but yeah, there's nice trading range on on SNX here that we broke out just in 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 Nova, uh, the end of December, effectively as well. Oh, we don't see chart. Okay, sorry. There we go. I apologize. Now you guys can see the chart. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so here we again kind of a, not a totally beautiful uh, inverse head and shoulders, uh, like 108 days of accumulation, almost identical to band. Like if you take a look at band and um, SNX here, you can see such ha high degrees of similarity between these two, at least in terms of the trading range. Um, although band's trading range was a little tighter. Uh, um, and look at the volatility of band too, um, bef before we're seeing uh, this this new continuation of the breakout. So again, uh, it's very likely S you could see something similar with SNX, where just the volatility drops us down to like eight bucks or something uh, before continuing. I guess we could open some of our momentum indicators to take a look to see if there's more going on here. Uh, let's take a look. Well, well, yeah, we don't open these too often because they make the chart look kind of super messy, but. Um, yeah, every, ever since we've closed above the box, although we are starting to close in below the, the, the band on the four hour, um, I do suspect we're probably coming down to around 11 bucks at least, maybe even as low as eight to touch the POC. Uh, I wouldn't make a, a highly leveraged or speculative trade here, but at the same point, from an accumulation standpoint, I think SNX, band, a lot of these guys, uni, all have a huge amount of potential. Um, I think the last time we charted uni, it was going upwards of like 10 bucks. So it's on its way there now. Um, link breakout. Link, uh, yes, link broke out earlier today. We went over to link already to some degree. Um, we had been focusing on accumulation ranges for link for the last two to three months. So it's already broken out of that. It's past the accumulation range. Um, but again, if you're in terms of building a portfolio, you can just keep accumulating. You know, you don't have to think too much. We're in a bull market, and that's like all I got to say. What's your opinion on Kava? Kava is another one of these ones that I would put again in that venture capital bag. Um, we saw a, a downwards channel, a little bit more volatility that I would ever want to play with. Look at this up and down 30%. Uh, a lot of retail hands in here. 
Uh, I would wait for the volatility to thin out before I thought too much about it. But again, if you think kava is like the shit uh, and you want to accumulate more of it, you go, go ahead. Just again, try to think about accumulation like going to the gym, which is basically uh, something you should be doing every month uh, over the next decade. Um, Alter Ego Gaming, can you tell me which, where I should invest my leftover money and which coins according to you? No, I can't do that. Um, we've gone over a bunch, like, like again, already. I've already said what I'm interested in, what I'm investing in, um, but I can't tell you what to do. You need to be able to come up with your own clear mindset, but Alter Ego Gaming, it sounds like you're way too heavily emotionally invested. You should probably go for a run. That's my, that's my advice to you. Go for a run. Um... <laughs> Bury your face on your thumbnails, what I imagine every new investor's face looks like this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny too is that photo was from the day after I did ayahuasca. <laughs> ah, funny stuff. Funny, funny stuff. Oh yeah, back to trading videos. Um, for someone just getting serious into investing, to trading, well, first off, don't get into trading first. That's a bad move for you. Focus on investing first and foremost. What would be a good ratio of accumulations of Bitcoin? Um, I'm around 80, 30 into Bitcoin and Ethereum, and the rest of the bag is like, uh, it's a different, but you could basically call my venture portfolio com different in general than, um, yeah, I would almost look at the venture capital portfolio separate than the regular one, because the venture capital portfolio has a lot of it that might go to zero that I just don't think about. Um, so guys, uh, we're, we're almost an hour into this. Um, I want to uh, say thank you for joining us today's live stream. We will be back tomorrow. Um, can you talk about how to deal with a loss? Yeah, cut them sooner than later. Um, well, it depends what it is. I mean, if you bought Bitcoin at 40 grand and you're worried about a loss now, you're like, you're just playing the game wrong. You need to think like an investor. Uh, you know, this is what a lot of people get wrong is they think that trading is the way that they're going to make a lot of money and they think that they can outsmart the markets. You're not going to be able to, not unless you've got some serious time on understanding and the money to be able to do so. And pr you probably don't if you're asking that question. So really, please flex, uh, flex that investor muscle by, um, just continuing to invest on a monthly basis and, and don't sell. Uh, KP says you are so valuable to us. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. I just do my best to share what I'm going through and learning. Um, you know, that's the best way to do it. We bounced right off the POC line for Bitcoin. Things are still looking good here. Do you like weed? Uh, I used to smoke ganja when I was younger, but not anymore. Um, and we'll leave it at that. I've gone off the deep end here. Uh, plus is an hour long, hour plus long live stream. Um, thank you guys all for joining us today. Give us a thumbs up if you like this content. We will be back again tomorrow uh, to update on the markets. Again, I do believe we are still in a bullish formation for Bitcoin. This first uh, Heiken Ashi trend change looks like that as well. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Um, just for fun, let's look at one last momentum indicator here on Bitcoin. Um, we've got... Uh, our eagle's nest turning up on the on the one hour. Good, looking good. And then we've got this nice fun one that I have not yet figured out. Um, let's go to the four hour, probably clearer, clearer data at least. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah. Um, everything is looking good. We had our that final buy signal came in the other day at 30,000. Um, we're headed down, but again, I think based off what we were looking at for our spring, um, that we're, we're about to see the turnaround again on the, on our Eagle's nest here for our momentum indicators, we haven't turned around yet, so we could still see a bit more downtime. Um, uh, but on the one hour, it's starting to turn up. So, and the hike and Ashy charts are starting to turn up on the one hour as well too. So keep that in mind. Anyways, it's T with the Arcane Bear. Thank you guys all for joining us. Um, I appreciate all the support. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Share it with your friends and family. Think about being a good investor before being a trader because we want you to be successful and you're more likely to be unsuccessful if you follow this going the path the wrong way. It's like starting at the most difficult part of skiing. Let's get you started on the bunny hill, which is buy a little bit every month, Bitcoin and Ethereum, and, and don't think about the price. 
just keep accumulating, keep showing up. And if you want to study, we'll be here every day doing these live shows. This is Tia with the Arcane Bear. Thank you guys all for joining us today. It means a lot to me. And we'll leave you out with our intro and outro.